This is the brand new Asus Zenfone 10 with a 5.9 inch screen, which makes it one of the most compact flagships there is. It has the latest 8 Gen 2 SoC and a 50 megapixel camera. This phone could be the perfect device for someone looking for a more compact phone, but it's barely smaller than one of the most popular Android phones, the Galaxy S23 at 6.1 inches. So can the Zenfone beat it? And starting with their designs. So the Zenfone definitely has some pretty unique design choices. It has two huge huge cameras, even though the lens inside only takes up a very small portion of that space. It could be reasonable for what they call the six axis gimbal stabilization for the main lens. And then maybe the ultra wide was just made to be the same size for aesthetics. But if you look closely, the ultra wide is just a tiny little lens in a big black circle. Also, the two bumps are not the same height. Haven't really seen another phone with a design like this. In comparison, the S23's camera bump is dramatically smaller, and I definitely prefer the look of that. And it also has much less branding elements on the back, and I do prefer this cleaner look. But the biggest difference is that the back of the Zen phone is plastic as opposed to the matte glass on the S23. The glass definitely feels more premium, but the Zen phone's back actually has a very unique texture. The best way that I can describe it is like a very fine grain sandpaper. It feels pretty grippy in the hand, but also pretty rough. It doesn't really feel like the matte plastic that you might find on another phone. I'm not really sure if I prefer this rough texture. However, I'm a fan of the color options of the Zen phone. So we have this green, this white, this blue, and also this matte black, which is very, very dark. Next to my S23, it makes it look almost grayish. Since the back of this phone is plastic, it won't have the same scratch resistance of glass, but that's actually not my biggest problem. The back plate is so thin that when you press on certain areas, you can kind of feel it flex. And also whenever you play anything out loud on this phone, you will feel the back vibrate. And it's a pretty strong vibration too. At first I thought it was kind of cool because it almost feels more immersive in a way. But after a while, it got pretty annoying. The S23 with a glass back obviously doesn't have the same problem. And actually, even with a plastic back, the Zen phone is about the same weight as the S23. All right, and looking at their sides. So both of them have an aluminum frame, but the Zen phone is matte and the S23 is glossy. I thought the matte finish would make it less fingerprinty, but as you can see, it still attracts quite a few fingerprints. I don't think it's any better than the glossy finish. Other than that, the power button on the Zen phone is also a fingerprint reader and I would say it reads very fast. But I still prefer the ultrasonic fingerprint reader that's right on the S23 screen. It's just a lot more convenient because when I grab the phone, I just put my thumb on there and it opens. I don't have to like fish around for the power button. And the Zen phone also has a headphone jack, which is very rare these days. Now, I personally don't really find it useful, but maybe you might. And also the speakers on the Zen phone are pretty good. It's pretty similar to the S23s. Overall, the speakers on these two phones are both pretty good but I still cannot get over that the Zen phone literally vibrates when it plays music. And moving on to their screens. So the Zen phone has non-uniform bezels. They're a little bit thicker at the top and the bottom, especially the bottom. And it's something that once you see it, you can't really unsee and Sometimes it does bother me a little bit. And other than that, it has a small hole punch camera at the top left corner. The Zenfone screen can go up to 120 hertz normally and then 144 hertz when gaming. But actually it's not just for gaming because technically you can add non-gaming apps like Chrome to be a game and then you can just force it to go 144 hertz. But to be honest, browsing Chrome on 144 hertz doesn't really feel any different from just typical 120 hertz. And the S23 does have an adaptive 120 hertz refresh rate. And aesthetic wise, the S23 has much more uniform bezels. They're also thinner and I think it looks a lot better. And when it comes to the screen brightness, so the S23 can go to 1750 nits peak, which is actually very impressive because it matches the peak brightness of the S23 Ultra. I don't have the official spec for the Zenfone's brightness, but next to the S23 in the sun, it does look just slightly dimmer but I would say it's still pretty usable. And of course, for indoor use, both of the brightness are more than enough. And both of the screens are also full HD+. Another aspect that's pretty different about these two phones are their softwares. So the Zen phone gives you the option to use either stock Android or their Asus optimized version. Right now I'm using the optimized one and it's pretty good in that it provides lots of extra features that makes it very convenient for one-handed use. Like for example, this power button has quite a few additional functions. You can swipe 
swipe down on it to get to the quick settings. You can also double tap on it to open up Google Assistant. And there's also additional functions for long pressing on it. But also the volume button is not just for the volume. When the screen is off, you can double press the volume and then it will turn on the camera and then take three photos. I don't think I've seen this feature anywhere else. Pretty cool, it could definitely be useful for when you suddenly see something cool happening. And there's also these dark screen gestures, which kind of blew my mind at first. How it works is that you just draw a letter on the dark screen and then it will launch a certain app. It actually works pretty well, but I quickly realized that it doesn't actually add anything that useful because besides the camera, you still need to unlock the phone first. So at that point, you might as well just unlock the phone and then go to whichever app you want. And then for the camera, there's actually already a shortcut on the lock screen anyways. The Zen phone also has this sidebar where you can put some additional apps and settings. And overall, I just feel that since this phone is so small, I actually feel slightly cramped when I'm typing on it with two hands. Maybe I'm just more used to like wider phones but I feel like people who use this phone will use it with just one hand most of the time. And while all those software features that I just mentioned definitely make it nicer, it's a little bit ironic that the actual one-handed mode is not great. It's the generic pull down mode that ends up only showing you half of the screen, like you see on the Pixel and also the iPhone. I much prefer how one hand mode is done on the Samsung because it shows you a smaller version of the entire screen. So it ends up being very, very usable. Not only can it help you reach things more easily, it can also let you type on it much easier with just one hand. And also Samsung is just miles ahead of the Zen phones, pretty clean, but basic software for customization. And it's mainly because of their exclusive Galaxy store. In there, you can find so many cute themes, wallpapers, always on display images if you want better aesthetic customization. And for more functional customizations, there's lots of options as well. For example, you can change up the home screen with home up. You can add more shortcuts using Registar. You can change up your keyboard with Keys Cafe. Those are the ones that I always use on the Samsung phone, but there's even more. I personally prefer the One UI software with all of the customization options, but I definitely see how someone could prefer the Zen phone for its more minimalistic software. And something else worth mentioning on the Zen phone is the game Genie. In here, you can set certain apps to be a game, and then you can set what performance mode you want for it, as well as change the refresh rate. So this is where I force Chrome to go to 144 Hertz. And then when you go to play a game or open an app that you designated as a game, you can swipe down from the corner to get the game Genie menu. So here you can change up the performance mode, but you can also toggle the refresh rate as well as turn on navigation block. You can also set macros, set a crosshair. These features can certainly be useful for playing games and they are more than what the S23 offers for gaming. So the Zen phone might be a better choice for gamers, but this smaller screen might make it less desirable. And moving on to their battery life, the S23 has a 3,900 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty decently sized, but the Zen phone actually has a 4,300 milliamp hour battery. I had both of the phones play a 4K 60 YouTube video. I turned on airplane mode, but kept Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on. And I had set their screen brightness to be about the same. It was around 75% on the S23 and probably 80%-ish on the Zen phone. Both of the phones started at 100%. And at the three hour mark, the Zen phone has 70% left while the S23 has 66% left. Unfortunately, shortly after this, my Wi-Fi stopped working. So the video stopped playing. This was meant to be a full drain test where I drained them to zero, but unfortunately it was just not meant to be. And this is actually my second time attempting this. I often wish my S23 had just a little bit more battery life. And this phone does deliver that. The battery size is definitely a great feature of this compact phone. And when it comes to charging, so the Zen phone can take maximum 30 watt for wire charging and 15 watt for wireless. And the S23 can go up to 25 watt for wired and 15 watt for wireless. And the Zen phone actually still comes with a brick, which is also kind of rare in today's market. So it's pretty nice that you can get the 30 watt charging right out of the box without having to buy anything extra, whereas the same cannot be said about the Samsung. And as for their performance, so both of these phones use the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip, but overall the Zen phone thermal throttles less than the Samsung. It seems to be able to keep maximum performance for seven minutes straight. And then it has a big decrease as opposed to the gradual decline on the S23. But yeah, 8 Gen 2 is very fast. It'll be especially great for shorter gaming sessions. And just in everyday use, I found both of these 
phones to be very responsive. They both feel extremely smooth. And lastly, let's take a look at their cameras, which is one area that I had high hopes for the Zen phone because its main lens is 50 megapixels. So just like last year and also on the S23. The S23's main lens shares the same resolution and sensor size as the Zen phones, but it technically is slightly better in that it gathers more light. And also it can focus quite a bit closer as you can see with these shots. And overall, the level of detail in their photos is pretty similar, but I think the S23 has noticeably better processing. The colors overall are just a little bit more pleasant looking, especially here in this flower shot. And it's a similar story with the ultra wide photos. The level of detail is similar, but again, the Samsung has a little bit better color, or at least I think so. And I also noticed in this Zenfone photo here, there's like a doubling artifact on the plane. There's literally two planes, which is kind of weird. And this isn't even the first time that I've seen this artifact. In this beach photo that I took, you can see the seagull also has like this doubling artifact. And this picture was taken with the main lens. So it almost seems like whenever something is moving, the Zenfone almost doesn't react fast enough, or at least processes it in a wrong way. The video stabilization is updated on the Zenfone and it's pretty impressive. But again, the processing just isn't quite there. I feel like the flower in this shot just looks way too red. I think it looks a lot better in the Samsung video. The S23 also has a three times telephoto lens, whereas the Zenfone doesn't have that. It can use the 50 megapixel main camera to do what they call the hyper clarity zoom, but next to a real telephoto lens, it's just not even close. The Samsung photo here just shows much more detail and looks much nicer. And it's also worth it to note that even though both of these phones main lens is 50 megapixel, only the S23 allows you to shoot actually 50 megapixels. There's no option to toggle that on on the Zen phone. So all of the Zen phone's main lens photos are just the regular 12 megapixels. Most of the time with the S23, you're probably just using the default 12 megapixel mode, but the 50 megapixel mode can definitely be nice for reducing sharpening and also to just get more detail in a photo. So it's nice to have that option and it's kind of unfortunate that it's not even an option on the Zen phone. And now let's take a look at their front camera. Just like with the back camera, these photos look pretty similar in terms of the level of detail. However, the Samsung colors are again, much better. I much prefer how my skin looks in the Samsung photo here. I don't know exactly how much the Zenfone 10 will cost, but given that last year, the Zenfone 9 started at 699, I'm just going to assume that it's probably about the same. The S23 officially starts at 799, although sometimes you can get it for cheaper. I assume the S23 will be slightly more expensive than the Zenfone 10, but I think the higher price is worth it for the better cameras and also just having the telephoto lens versus not. And the One UI software is very well refined, highly customizable, and also has lots of features. But the Zenfone does have more gaming features and it also thermal throttles slightly less. So if you're primarily interested in more heavy games, then the Zenfone could be a better option. I really hope you enjoyed this review. I'm making more content on TikTok now, so you can follow me there. Remember to subscribe if you found this video helpful and you can watch more here.